Hi, thank you so much for joining us here in person, or if you're joining us virtually online. I'm Charlie Mann, and this is my wonderful colleague, Libby Schultz, and we're going to take you through CNCF 101. Um, but first, we just want to start with a message from our marketing director, Christy. She unfortunately got really sick last week, and she can't join us, so she recorded a, a really lovely video just to kick this off for us. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are tuning in from. Welcome to CNCF 101. My name is Christy Tan. I am the Director of Marketing and Member Programs here. Um, I'm so excited that you decided to um, join our session today. I hope it's informative and helpful for you. Um, and I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there in person uh, due to being sick. However, uh, Charlie and Libby have a great presentation lined up for you, and I personally will be in the chat uh, here to answer your questions or set up a separate time to meet. Uh, before the presentation begins, I just wanted to set the scene a little bit. Um, for me personally, uh, being a part of CNCF and Team Cloud Native has been wonderful. Um, it's crazy to me to think about um, early on in my career learning about CNCF, this new project that was coming into the Linux Foundation, and I couldn't even imagine where we would be today with over 117 projects, over 152,000 contributors, um, people participating from all over the world, including 186 countries. I mean, the growth has just been insane. And um, with that, we, you know, are very interested in bringing up the next generation of cloud natives. So this presentation is for you. Uh, whether you're a student, uh, maybe you are a decision maker at your company, uh, maybe you're a developer, or maybe you are someone who's been around for a while, or it has been a while, <laughs> um, and you want to learn more about what we're doing here at CNCF and how you can get involved. As I said, this presentation is for you. It's an open um, invitation for you to join us and join Team Cloud native. Um, I hope you learn a lot through this presentation. Again, I'll be here in the chat to answer your questions. Um, and with that, uh, take it away, Libby and Charlie. Hi, I'm Libby. This is Charlie. You've, uh, <laughs> you've met us all. Um, just a quick intro. I, um, Charlie runs our content strategy and I am running our online programs. So I may have spoken to some of you or maybe not, maybe I will in the future. And yeah, just to, to set the scene for this presentation. So I'm not sure sort of what backgrounds you all come from and this is, is really 101 level, it's meant for everyone. So basically entering this community, we like to see it as boarding a ship and um, because Christy, Libby, and I are humans who are mildly obsessed with musicals. Uh, we thought we'd set this uh, to the theme of the Muppets Treasure Island, which, in my humble opinion, is the best Muppet revisioning of a classic tale ever made. Um, and in this tale, uh, Jim, Gonzo, and Rizzo board the Hispaniola to go and sail the seven seas and find buried treasure. And they're guided by this ancient treasure map that was given to them by this really shady old pirate one night in a pub, which I know that's how I got involved in Cloud Native. I don't know about the rest of you. Um, and just like a pirate ship, or kind of actually any ship really, joining Team Cloud Native, it takes everyone to sail us. Of course, we've got the captain, but we've also got navigators. We have cooks. We have people who have to climb the rigging and let the sails down. Um, and the whole point of this is that everyone's welcome in Team Cloud Native. No matter what your background, no matter what your expertise, there is room for you to contribute, and we really want to encourage that. Okay. All right. So some of you may know, uh, maybe you're learning this week. What is CNCF? The Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or CNCF, hosts critical components of the global technology infrastructure. Those critical components, of course, are the projects that you know and love, but also working groups, board, and committees who are steering us all on their journey, the boat. And importantly, it's um, the end users and you and the community who are actively using, developing, and growing uh, cloud native across the globe. Our mission statement, you have heard it a few times this week. Um, and you know Linux is in the kitchen, but it's in modern fridges. That's where we're getting cloud native. It's going to be everywhere. Um, also, here we are. You've also probably seen some of this this week. We've been growing insanely since being founded in 2015, and today we have folks from literally every corner of the world in this wonderful community. 
and it's the foundation of doers. Worst kept secret ever, it's you. It's Team Cloud Native. It's the amazing community that sails this wonderfully wacky and uh, horizon riding ship. <laughs> Sticking with the theme. theme. So just to give you a bit of background on the projects and the structure of CNCF. So as you can see on this slide, we've kind of got three pillars within the CNCF that kind of drive the ship. So we've got our governing board. Um, they steer the direction. They're responsible for marketing um, and business oversight and strategy decisions. Now, this doesn't include any technical decision making. The only thing that the governing board will do that's technical is liaise with the technical oversight committee on strategy. Um, and folks are elected to this board, um, normally from member companies, but also we do have electees from the end user community and working groups. Um, and in the middle, we have our technical oversight committee. Um, so or TOC, as you might hear us call them, they provide the technical leadership for us at CNCF and the cloud native community. So they're the ones doing things like delivering and maintaining the technical vision. Uh, for the foundation, they approve projects. They are the ones who decide when projects graduate or move up levels, um, and they also create conceptual architectures for us. Now, both of these groups, they do meet regularly, and any of you can go and read the minutes of these meetings online. You just have to go to the CNCF website, uh, click About, and have a look um, under these two sections. And the third column, of course, is just as important. It's the end user community, the, like the people who are actually actively using cloud native projects day in, day out in the real world. Um, they are super active in collaborating with the TOC and the governing board. And it's so important that we get continuous feedback about where we're going and where the projects are going so we can make sure to steer the ship in a direction that's good for everybody. And you might have heard us talk about you know, projects in terms of maturity levels at CNCF. So we have three levels, and we'll work from the top down. So graduated are like Kubernetes. So they are very mature. They're projects that are used in production all over the world. And then the next level down, we have our incubating projects. Um, so these have huge traction already in the community. Many have thousands of contributors. Many are actually already being used in production. Um, but the TOC hasn't yet seen them kind of cross that chasm into wider adoption. And the sandbox is the playground. It's a super fun place. This is chock-a-block full of really experimental tech at the cutting edge. These projects are not tested whatsoever in production. So if you do want to, to use them, you're probably going to be doing a lot of work yourself. But it's a, a wonderful place to be. Um, and actually, when we look at this slide, I, we have this Crossing the Chasm book that we talk about all the time. And for us, the chasm is basically when a project becomes ubiquitous. Um, we survey the community every year. And last year, we found that 96% of folks are either using or evaluating Kubernetes in production. So for us, that has crossed the chasm. It is now as ubiquitous as uh, Windows. And just to sort of go through, these are a couple of the projects. You've probably seen a lot um, of these logos. And just FYI, you can get stickers uh, for all of these um, in the pavilions. So please feel free to pick those up and support your favorite projects. And of course, there are many more sandbox projects than there are graduating and incubating. I think there's over 100 in the sandbox at the moment. OK. so. We have discussed the projects, and you saw there are quite a few. So where do you get started? How about let's start with some definitions. Uh, we have an amazing initiative that's being going on right now that can help you fully get to grips all of the wacky acronyms in the cloud native. Uh, it's our glossary. It's in multiple languages like Portuguese, Hindi, Korean, Italian. It's a hashtag glossary dash localizations channel on the CNCF Slack. Hit it up and say hi. This is constantly being um, contributed to and added to, and more languages will come as, as folks want to hop in and do it. So it's a very active, um, active glossary right now. Um, and yes, you, uh, you've probably seen or heard of the cloud native landscape. So this is the, the treasure map, um, as it were. And I'm guessing you've seen memes about this. It is the stuff of nightmares. But um, as you might have heard in Priyanka's presentation yesterday, 
just sit and get comfortable with it because it starts to make sense um, after a little while. Basically, what this, uh, this does is we've tried to compile and organize all cloud native open source and proprietary products into this landscape so folks can find the tools that they need for the right job. Um, and it's just kind of a reminder as well, there are some proprietary products in here, so you won't just see CNCF projects. Um, any organization that's building a cloud native tool, you can actually add it to this. All you have to do is submit a PR. So this is completely community uh, run. One thing I do recommend, if you go on this online, you'll see a tab on the top left corner. One of them is landscape and the other is guide. If you click on guide, there is an amazing guide that's been written to actually navigate this and talk you through each section and what it means. And that is, I refer to it almost every day. It's super helpful. And one other little thing, you might have seen these uh, adorable characters popping up. These are a Fippy and Friends. This was actually a really lovely community initiative that was started um, back by uh, a couple of folks who now work at Azure. Um, and they wrote a lovely book about Fippy, the PHP app, who is represented by a giraffe, um, and her adventures in cloud native. And the whole idea is, basically just demystify this crazy world that we occupy in cloud native. Um, any of you can use the Fippy and Friends characters in any of your projects, any of your presentations. These are licensed under the Creative Commons and we have all of the assets available for you on GitHub um, and we can share links after this. So please feel free to take these delightful characters on adventures of your own. And if you haven't done the virtual photo booth yet, you can have your picture with a Fippy character. Um, okay, so memberships and internships. CNCF proudly supported more than 100 individuals through various mentoring and internship opportunities in 2021, including the LFX mem mentorship platform, Google Summer of Code, Google Summer of Docs program, and Outreachy. We take mentorship very seriously because folks who have participated in our mentorships have gone on to do some amazing things. Um, these programs happen throughout the year, so there's tons of opportunities to get involved. So check back um, in these links and, and see what's current. And learning and developing yourself. Here's training and certifications. You've probably heard about it. We have a lot, and it's seriously <laughs> good training. We have a team dedicated at the Linux Foundation to ensure that our certifications are the highest possible caliber. Um, and there are also free courses you can take, like an introduction to Kubernetes on EDX. So there you go. And I know in that last slide, there were a couple of other sections you thought, oh, you haven't spoken about this. We wanted to go into a little bit more detail. Um, so you may have seen um, people with um, ambassador badges walking around here. So our ambassadors are individuals who are super passionate about CNCF and our projects, and they're recognized publicly um, for that. The, the main thing is they're really willing to help others get to grips with the cloud native world, whether it's building and tooling or, or whether it's just kind of demystifying things. Um, the really successful ones are the bloggers, the influencers, the evangelists, um, and they're really, really engaged in the projects. And you can become uh, an ambassador. The requirements are that you do need to be an active contributor um, to one or more projects, um, and you have to be willing to speak uh, at community events um, or write uh, any technical content for our blogs. If you are not, however, a coder, we still welcome people to be ambassadors. So you can host cloud native events in your local region. Uh, you can be localizing things for your local language. So there's a, a lot of opportunity to get involved. And we, we do pay you, it's 150 US dollars a month to make sure that you can be really successful um, as an ambassador. And uh, we just want to talk a little bit more about kind of the, the self-service community as we move on from, um, from ambassadors. And you may have heard in the keynote yesterday, and you can hopefully clearly see at the conference, like we are, are growing. The community is absolutely huge. And that's really fantastic because it gives us more opportunities um, to contribute and to get involved and also to advance careers. 
um, one of the best ways to get started contributing is actually to visit our contributors website. This is run entirely by the community and will actually guide you to all the various options that are available for you. Uh, you can see the address on the slides um, and we will also share it with you after the presentation. And there are other opportunities, of course, to get involved with the community. We have events all over the world. We're at KubeCon now. We're going to be in Detroit in October. Um, there are also the CKDs, the Kubernetes Community Days. These are really fantastic. They're regional events, often in local languages. Um, and we just get together and we actually chat about Kubernetes. We meet each other. It's a really fun way to get involved. There are tons of cloud native community groups as well. These are both online and in person. You can often find them on you know, the Meetup website and you can also find them through the CNCF website. And we've, uh, we've talked about contributing. So what we wanted to do in this slide is just give you a flavor of some of the different things you can contribute to. So we have a couple of, uh, of different ones. One of the, the nice ones that I love to start with is actually like the non-code groups. So we've already talked about the glossary um, that you can contribute translations to. We have some really fun working groups. We have the Cartographos working group. So they are writing a guide through the cloud native adoption process. They are also looking for more members. Um, we have the Business Values Committee, which is basically folks who are trying to help businesses understand the value of cloud native. We also have special interest groups. So um, special interest groups, just for reference, these are started by the Technical Oversight Committee. They're very, very well run and organized. Um, and they focus on specialist areas, so things like observability or security. Um, you can join any of these at all, you know, at any time, and you don't necessarily have to be, again, a developer. Um, we have working groups too, which are fantastic. You know, we've got the, the CICD working group. These are a little bit more loose. They're not necessarily started by the TOC, but again, they're exceptionally well run. Um, and we encourage you just to get involved. Folks are so happy to see you on the Zoom calls. It's like a, a lovely sort of party every evening, at least for me in Europe, to, <laughs> to dial in and just chat and find out what's going on. And we've just popped this up again, just to remind you, there are a ton of opportunities to get involved and we really encourage you, yeah, to, to step forward and, and join in. All right, membership stats. We have over 780 members. Uh, we're the only foundation with every major worldwide corporation, uh, worldwide cloud provider as a member. And we have the largest end user network. So just a couple little membership stats for you. Um, Another slide, I'll just let you kind of peruse. End user members, general members, and another one for you to check out. Just take a look at all of our uh, cloud and software members. Here again. <laughs> There's a lot. I know. So 170 plus organizations are part of the end user community. Here's a few. And is anyone a member in the audience today? Can we see any hands or is everyone, everyone new? Okay, cool. Well then we'll kind of skip through this um, and, and get to some questions and things for y'all. Marketing and brand awareness. Um, there's the marketing committee meetings, or in the committee, the meetings are once a month. Uh, we gather on a call. We actually gathered for coffee this morning, so you can hop in on those. Um, online programs, which is near and dear to me, that's what I run every day, are webinars, live streams, and um, on-demand webinars. So those are a member benefit, um, and based on your membership, you get a certain amount per quarter. Um, the CNCF blog is another great way to get involved and submit blog posts um, and work on, you know, getting getting all your information out there. Kubernetes blogs and the Cube Weekly newsletter. That's a weekly newsletter that goes out. Um, we have a again some volunteers and editors that kind of help us put that together. Um, obviously, KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon and public relations and analyst relations support. So, lots of good stuff to help support you. 
And here's just a snapshot of our marketing benefits. It's kind of a lot to go over, so I'll kind of just let you check it out. But these are the different levels of membership and some of the things that come along with it, um, like we were saying, per, per. And I believe you'll have access to all these slides it's, later, so yes. y'all can go back and check. And that's kind of it. So um, y'all have heard us talk, introduce CNCF and talk about all the different people and personas and that make up our community. So let's take the next step and come and join us. Everyone has a seat at the table. We're welcome uh, and happy to see you. Do you want to Perfect, yeah. I'll open for questions or anything? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, we Please can clap. Clapping. Please clap. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Our number one fan in the front row. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we are open for questions and we'll also just hang around for a bit afterwards if people just wanna chat one on one too. Anyone? Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you wanna say for everyone virtually? Uh, the CNC have uh, um, ambassadors in uh, in the same city, uh, obviously I am thinking in, in if I could be an ambassador, but I don't know if there uh, other ambassador in the same city, uh, it could be possible. Um, yeah, they're, are they all in the same city? They, they have to be in that same community? No. No, ambassadors can be absolutely anywhere in the world. Um, we do a lot, obviously, online at the moment of online engagement. Um, but yeah, honestly, we, we welcome folks from everywhere. And we do have ambassadors who live in the same city, so we... Right, and yeah. I'm sure they probably organize some meetups on their own. Um, definitely, there's an ambassador Slack channel as well on the CNCF Slack, so you can also kind of connect with each other there also. What else, anyone else? Um, hello. Uh, I, I saw that actually uh, probably the presentation was more focused on the audience, you know, that we can participate and as volunteers here and there. But I have a question about the companies that actually we saw a lot of companies to be, to be members uh, of the foundation. Uh, is it possible to give us some kind of, you know, could be a link or, you know, if there are already some kind of materials, you can refer to them as well. But uh, because actually some of the large number of the contributors are a kind of uh, software developers or you know mm -hmm. people who are uh, creating uh, intellectual property type of work, right? So what is the way this to be, how this is managed? I mean, because people who are working for companies, actually once they're contributing to the foundation uh, projects, from accounting or financial perspective, I mean, this is uh, this is a foundation, right? But I mean, uh, how this is managed because you know this is a kind of a challenge, you know, to, to be figured out. Uh, the reason to ask this question is because you know probably if such information is more easily uh, published or f uh, made to be find easily, uh, probably some of the other uh, talks that I hear, you know, for maintainers or uh, you know reviewers and etc could be possible to be answered, you know, easily. Uh, because once we have companies, then for example, I never heard, you know, I'm just guessing at the moment from what I hear. Uh, it's possible to, to be uh, created a kind of a, a batch work, uh, you know, monthly uh, volunteering time, you know, like two days or a week or whatever in companies. Uh, and uh, that time actually, you know, they, it have to be paid. You know, sorry mm -hmm. to, to set such a direct question, but you know, this is uh, about how we're going to manage the IP stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if there is a pattern or some, uh, a few patterns, you know, how this actually can be done uh, is going okay. to be very helpful. Yeah. I know it, I, I ask actually a very broad <laughs> topic, actually, this is not a question. No, it's a really interesting topic, actually, because um, really it's kind of managed by companies themselves. So just for a bit of background, we were founded in 2015 um, because Google very kindly donated uh, the Kubernetes project. So that's what we've grown up around. Um, that was something that was created internally within Google and they saw that it had a fantastic application outside and in the real world. So most of our big projects are donated by companies. Like for example, Spotify wrote Backstage. Um, that's now one of our, our big incubating projects. So many companies actually 
pay their developers like for the time to invest in these projects because it's not only helping us as the wider community, it's helping them um, because they're creating software that they are then using internally. Um, it, it's kind of a, like you say, it is a patchwork. Like many big companies, they give people the time to be able to donate to these projects and to be able to do maintainer work. Um, but there is a lot of like extra work on the side for ambassadors in particular, you know, folks who are arranging meetups and hosting and talking at events. So it's, I think it really depends on the individual company as to how you manage that. Um, but what we found is most member companies, end user companies are really happy for folks to, you know, to be spending a bit of hack time or slack time, no matter what you call it in the company, working on CNCF projects. But we can certainly try and find you a little bit more background information. I'm sure that we've got some good literature that's been written about this somewhere. All right. Any, ah. Thank you. I would like to ask you about the ambassador programs. Uh, are there any requirements or are there, is there any official maybe steps which somebody has to complete to get the title? Sorry, for ambassadors. So ambassadors, yeah. Um, what you need to do um, is basically just apply. M um, maybe I'm working in the region of the Czech and Slovak Republic yeah. and I'm organizing meetups. And maybe Fantastic. I would like to ask if it's possible maybe to apply for it. And yes, you should definitely apply for it. Mm -hmm. um, we can send you the link. If yeah, chat to us afterwards. Okay. Um, it's a very straightforward application process, but we really welcome people from all around the world. So you sound like a great fit. You're already doing these meetups. So yeah, let's chat. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. This is good. I'm glad we've, we've been able to answer all of your questions. Yes, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Um, yeah, like Charlie said, we'll hang out for a little bit. Um, or were there any questions on the chat that we needed to read out from Christy? I don't think so. All right. Well, we'll hang out if anybody wants to come and chat about anything else or if you have any other questions. And um, if you miss us here, you know where to find us. So thank you all for coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a fantastic day.